All right, this one is the um, Heat Kit HL2200. That's going to do an initial power up on it. Uh, this is what I do to my amps that have been sitting in unknown condition and all that. This is a recent buy at the Dayton 2025 Hamvention, and I'm trying to get some done. Um, so basically, um, uh, it's been modded, not by me. I'll go through this later, but you know, you can see the parasitics and great big doorknob cap somebody used, and it's been 10 meterized. Um, all the band stuff has been taken out, and it's a 10 meter coil only. Glitch resistor added, but that's not the best type of glitch resistor. Um, Harbach uh, board for the high voltage, that's a good thing. Um, somebody made a, um, I don't know if I can get to it with the camera. Yeah, did it, did it. let me get up. <clears throat> yep, there it is. The um, input tuning. This was all the input circuit and and all that and somebody took all that out um, all the other ham bands were under there and they took that out took the band switch out and um, they made it look like a little homemade input tuner and then a variable cap on the band switch uh, for input tuning and uh, other than that it looks pretty stock with the Harbach board and all that um, the uh, plate transformer, filament transformer, the plate transformer on these is undersized to me. Um, I always said that the uh, Heathkit SB220's series, the SB221, is just a, a SB220 and they took out 10 meters due to the FCC uh, crackdown that, and FCC made, them, um, made it illegal to sell an amp that had 10 meters in it I think that was 1978 so he went from the um, SB220 to the 221 and I think from 78 to somewhere around um, 83 um, I have to look that up but then when the um, new series of he kit stuff came out they got rid of that ugly kind of green and they went with this brownish green color here kind of trying to update the style a little bit um, to get rid of that drab green I guess um, but anyway this is basically um, almost part for part a SB221 without 10 meters in it originally you can see the band switch 80 40 20 and 15 and uh, didn't have the tap for 10 uh, on the um, coil and it didn't have an input uh, tuner for um, 10 meters and it also had a input filter they called it and the filter was kind of a secret but all the filter was was a 10 11 meter um, block or notch filter it, it took out uh, 10 11 meters coming into the amp so therefore, if you tried to drive the amp, you know, on 10 meters, 11 meters, it would um, notch out your drive. Um, quick story, I knew a guy that had a uh, SB221 that had that filter still in it. And he drove that um, SB221 with the Phantom 500. And he did 500 watts out the Phantom and he'd get 1,000 in the heat kit. So he was getting 2 to 1. Um, DB gain on his um, amplifier and he did that for many 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 years until I took that filter out um, and this guy caught cancer brain cancer and died and I always thought that um, maybe the reason that that happened because he had that um, Phantom driving that Heath kit with that notch filter and he had a whole lot of bad stuff going on with that but anyway to get back to it this is how I power up my amps. Um, I use the Variac and even though this amp is set on 220 which I'm leaving it on for now I'm going to still use the Variac. I got it uh, connected with my um, jumper there my hot wire and uh, amp is on, Variac is off 
and since this amp has a high voltage meter I'm going to use the meter to see if my high voltage come up I'm going to use the voltmeter here on the variac and eventually that's going to come on and that's going to show me my amps and watts that the variac is pulling and I'm going to see if everything is copacetic so uh, we're dialed all the way down turn on the variac uh, we got it off somewhere else hold on Damn, doctor got too many switches. There you go. That one's on. Now that one's on. And we're going to slowly dial it up. And as we dial up the Variac, we should see the um, high voltage dialed up. Also, be careful. Um, you know... I'm going to dial it up and even though I'm putting 110 into it if everything goes well it's still going to be about 1500 hopefully uh, volts on the plate of this thing um, that could kill you I do have that grounded in the back um, I got good grounds around here um, so anyway be careful don't do this at home but this is the way I do it I put it on a variac I don't just plug in stuff and I slowly dial it up which I'm doing now. You can see the um, plate voltage going up as I dial it up. And I'm going to stop right there. A little bit more. So with about 50 volts in, this thing is only pulling about 17 watts, which is almost nothing. And you can see the um, plate volts is up to about 600 volts. So 50 volts in, 600 volts out, not pulling any amps. That's a pretty darn good indication that nothing's dead shorted, at least yet. Even though um, the other day I was playing with that mystery uh, Alinko amplifier, and everything looked good, tested good, and I was dialing up, and I got about halfway, and I'm on about 60 now, and um, heard the heard the pop and uh, it popped the um, high voltage transformer in the Alinko so I'm not out the woods yet I'm about you know 775 now with about 60 volts on the Variac only pulling 28 watts so we're still nice and low so we are gonna slowly dial her up fans starting to kick in plate current meter here ain't going crazy so that's an indication the tubes haven't shorted yet but you know the more voltage you put on it the more of an indication um, of whether them tubes are short if you stick a lot of voltage on them I had a um, still dialing it up a Heekit SB220 the other day uh, he had a customer's tubes in it and uh, it was on 110 and getting 1800 watts out of it and then the customer was like no I want it on 220 and the amp was wired for 110 directly so I couldn't convert it over to 220 right then I had to do some research and some other stuff because whoever modded it had just you know soldered in and directly wired it to 220 so a few days later when I got it to 220 and powered it up, you know, amp was working fine on uh, 110, 1800 watts. I put that thing on 220 and uh, one of the tubes went. Customer was not happy. But that was the difference between, you know, 110 line voltage and then going up to 220 and then uh, keying it down. That's when the tubes went. The tube just couldn't handle that uh, extra voltage. So anyway, talking dialing it up and I'm actually all the way up on the Variac you know 81 watts which is about right uh, fans running slow you can see the tubes are starting to light up so my filament should be good and I'm on the low side guess I can dial it down the Variac and try it again on the high side SSB side Okay, we on SSB now. We gonna dial it up. A little quicker this time.
and about 1.7 that's kilovolts or 1700 volts and again that's only putting in about um, maybe a little bit over half about 125 on the very A looks like that's all it goes to and another quick tidbit though is tubes don't like to be ran with low filament voltage they like to have filament voltage exactly so I'm like I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because you know people who like to um, slowly vary yak it up and recharge the caps and all that over you know hours and over days take your tubes out because um, tubes don't like running low on the filament they don't like running high either they like to be uh, right on the number on the filament voltage you can see my voltage dropping you know the uh, voltage is bleeding down and I guess so far I'm fairly happy uh, maybe this thing works Heathkit HL2200. Bye.